Hey, welcome to this really long... I didn't realise how long I've been. It's really long, but it's all about just being able to learn to work at 100%. But no, it's not. It's learning how to produce at 100%. Working more efficiently, with less effort, and getting the most return on your investment, which is you. Now, surely that's important to you. You don't want burnout, you don't want fatigue, you don't want illness, you want harmony. This is really interesting, I think. Have a listen now. Warning, 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 warning. You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hey friend, it's me again, Paul. And today on the Personal Development Unplugged podcast, I'm going to teach you. Teach you. Yes, teach you. No, I'm not. I want to talk about, have a conversation about learning to work at 100% or more. Imagine that. Working at 100% or more. Because you get so much of this on on these supposedly thought leaders and do this. We, we work at 100%. We hustle. We groove. We do this. We do that. And we come out with a lot of BS. But anyway, that's beside the point at the moment because I want to teach you, share with you, give you some tips of how to work at 100% or more. Or better still, maybe achieve 100% or more. You see, imagine. Let's, see, let's just go there now. I'll, I'll, I'll calm down because I was actually working at 100% there, wasn't I? Well, let's just calm down. And just think for a moment, what would it be like to work at 100% or more and be successful? Because there's no point in just imagining working 100% 100 and you're rushing around doing all those urgent things which are sort of important and not important and and, and you're being really busy because the whole day is, is filled with busyness. Just imagine that. Imagine you're so, so busy, but you're working 100%. Just imagine now seeing yourself over there. You're rushing around, you're, you're so busy, you're telling everybody, yeah, this is the hustle, this is the life, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this for so many hours a day. Imagine what you'll see through your own eyes when you're doing that. See the world go past so fast. Listen to that inner voice of yours saying, come on, let's hustle, come on, man, let's do it. Or come on, woman, let's do it. I, I, I find that difficult, because being a man, I say, come on, man, come on, dude, dude. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do, I do know, oops, bang, I do know what I'm talking about. But you imagine that inner voice when you're working at 100% or more. Imagine what you'd smell and taste as things go past so quickly, as you're really putting all that effort in. Imagine what it would feel like to, at the end of the day, say, I've worked at 110%. If you can, can you ever do that, work at 110%? I don't know. So I always thought 100% is working flat out. But who knows? You can do 110% of more than what you did last time. But that's beside the point. That's a maths lesson. And we don't do math. So imagine all of that. Seeing what you're seeing. Hearing what you're hearing. The smell, the taste, the feeling of working at 100%. And as you think of all of that, ask yourself. Or just think about this for the moment. Just think. Will it happen? I can give you the answer. No. No way. You can achieve 100%, but you cannot work at 100%. That's where the bullshit comes in. Don't believe the hype from these particular people who tell you this is what you've got to do. Because it's just hype to get clicks, clickbait, all that stuff. Because what happens, and what they don't tell you, the real facts are, there's a thing called burnout. And you hear of people burning out. I've seen it myself. I've never, never experienced it in myself, but I've experienced seeing it in other people. People working at so intense levels that when they burn out, they are absolutely, well, they're, they, they're a crumpled mess and they're full of so many different negative emotions. And with that comes so much unconfidence and anxiety. And we'll talk about that shortly. But they get fatigued. There's a massive amount of fatigue because you need a certain amount of sleep. You know, you get these people who will say, I, I, I live on 
two to three hours of sleep a day. Yeah, you do. But then after about a year, you crash and burn. Because your body cannot do it. And your body needs to, to heal itself. It needs to re-energize itself. It needs to just get back into the sink of living your life properly. There's injury. We, we start making silly mistakes because we are not focusing. We think we're focusing, but we're doing everything so busily. And we think that's really good to do so many things at once, which you can never do. By the way, multitasking doesn't work. Your brain can only function on one thing. If you want to, want to try it, think of a sad thing and a happy thing all at once. You blow up. You implode. It won't work. So you've got injury because we're making silly mistakes. You know, we're, we're dropping things. We're breaking things. We're catching our fingers in things or we're cutting ourselves or all, all that stuff because we're just not concentrating because our brain is now, well, it's just being overused. Our body's been overused. Then what happens? What, or what else could happen? Well, I told you about that anxiety. So you get the anxiety, the fear, then you get fear of missing out. I'm working all this time, but there's others seem to be doing it more, and they're going to, I've got to do this. And that FOMO comes harder, more and more intense. And does it inspire you to do more? Not from a good place. It just, you do even more, but less efficiently. And then you get imposter syndromes kicking in because now you really feel like you're imposter because you're making all these mistakes. But will people see you? Will people notice you? Fear of missing out again. Then I get more and more tired and I'm getting more burnt out and I'm getting more anxiety about this. And then you look at your relationships. Now, these can be romantic relationships or just relationships with anybody because your temper's short. You're not communicating properly. That's why the mistakes are going on. Then you kick off on one. You know, these are all effects. They're not the cause, they're effects. So your relationships go, go askew. Then you can just have real ill health. I'll tell you a story. True story. Lady come to see me and said, I'm getting these massive migraines. And I'm, you know, when it happens, I have to leave work. And my work is so important. I work so many hours away. And we get this 110%. You know, I work so intense for long periods of time. Because my work is so important. Nobody else can do it. Only me. And it has to be done this way. And blah, blah, blah. And I get these migraines and they take me off the grid. I have to go and lay down in a darkened room. And it's not just for a day. It's for about three days. Can you do something about that? So I said, yeah, sure we can. Sure we can. But the migraine is not the problem. That's what you came through the door with. That's the issue. And the effect that you're realizing, it's a behavior. Now, I wonder what the positive intention is to have that behavior. Well, there's a flash of the bleeding obvious all around, but still she didn't get it. So we started talking with a little bit of hypnosis in between. So she wasn't quite sure. A little bit of communication with the unconscious mind and the conscious mind. But she was saying, well, you see, it used to be different, Paul. Because earlier on in my working life, Things would get busy, a bit like they are now, and I'd get a backache. It would just be one of those pains, and I thought, well, it's just a muscle tension, you know, from the stress. So I knew exactly what to do. So I thought, well, you're going to de-stress, aren't you? You're going to take time out. You're going to just, you know, take a few breaths. You're going to do... She said, I knew exactly what to do. So I took some painkillers, and the painkillers, they worked, and I carried on. But then that backache would get a little bit worse. So I'd take more painkiller and carry on working. And then she said, and then after that, when I took so many painkillers and the backache was, well, it's not good. I wasn't happy with myself, but I was still pushing on with the work. Then lo and behold, these blooming migraines come along. You know what, what I'm going to say. But we did this little bit of hypnosis for her to get her to really communicate with her unconscious. And ask the question, you know, what are you trying to do for me? And it was a little bit like, save you. Save you from yourself. Save you from total burnout. Totally fatigue. To or total fatigue. To stop you making mistakes because you're going to make mistakes at work, which is going to kick you out of the work that you love. So I'm saving you by giving you these migraines because then we can 
in those three days, laying down with a wet compress, a cold compress on your forehead, we can just renew, recharge. And and it was that flash of the bleeding obvious where she goes, well, I get it now, Paul. You know, the back aches were my signals. I ignored them. I did that and other things. But I have to do my work. And I said, well, just what else is happening? said, well, also, you know, my relationship with my husband isn't that good because I'm really pushing it. And my work colleagues are noticing that I get really tetchy, especially just before that blooming migraine comes up. It's like I build up, build up, and boom. So I said, well, what would it be like to get into a little bit more harmony with yourself? I said, what are you talking about? Came for hypnosis, came for hypnotherapy, get rid of these migraines. I said, well, maybe we will. Sure we will. But what would happen if you made a pact with your unconscious mind? I said, what are you talking about? A bit like that thing. What you talk about, Willis? I don't know if anybody remembers. Anyway, so I said, if you made a little pact to say, well, if I'm working too hard, where I'm going to cause that burnout, cause that fatigue, cause those uh, relationships to go askew, if you, my unconscious mind, gave me a little signal and I honoured it by taking just a little bit of time, maybe as much as 20 minutes, maybe at the weekend, just having the Sunday with my, my husband or doing the things that would relax me to, to invigorate me, to just get my interest in other things. If I got a little signal and I honoured it and I did those things, would that be okay and not without the need then of the migraines? And she said, well, that's pretty crazy, Paul. How can you make that, that thing? How can you make that type of a... I said, let's do it. Close your eyes. Now, honestly say, inside your unconscious mind, would it be okay if you gave me a little signal? Maybe like just that little old twinge in that little bit of that back that I used to get. Just a little twinge, like a little signal. And if I honoured it by just going for a walk for 20 minutes, Obviously, if I'm in the middle of something, I'd get to a point as quick as I can to stop and then go out for a walk to breathe, just to relax, to take a breath, look at the, you know, wander around just having to look at things, just to recharge in that, those 20 minutes. Would that be okay? And she sat there quietly. And as she did, you could, she couldn't see it, but I could see it. Her physiology just changed. Things just, re- all the muscles just relaxed. There was a smile started to come on her face. And she opened up her eyes and said, that would be okay, Paul. I said, how do you know? Because I never take, take these things on Facebook. Really. How, how the blooming hell do you know? Convince me that you know. She said, because I got this overwhelming feeling of yes. But it was a feeling of yes. A feeling of yes. We're together again. We're communicating. And I said, but here's the thing. Here's the rub. Are you prepared to accept the migraines without prior notice? If you don't keep to your agreement by taking that little time out and planning your weekends to and maybe a little bit in the evening to, to do things, you said, oh, absolutely. If I know I can get rid of those migraines by just taking time out with that little signal, I will, I will, I will do that. And if it means then if I, if I ignore it and I have to go to the, into that room for three days, then that will be my decision then, won't it? Oh, there's a big one. So we said, okay, that's it, job done. Just go inside and say, yeah, I accept. So she did that, I accept, yeah. And off she toddled. Because, well, toddled is my way of walk. So. so off she toddled back to work and did her stuff. And as usual, I got the phone call saying, uh, oh, Paul, by the way, I don't need that other session, that second session. So, oh, okay, why? How? What's happening? She said, because things are just working out fine. There was a couple of times when I just had that little bit of a, Oh, a little, little signal, just as we said. So I literally said, I'm stopping here and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee out in the sunshine. Just stand in the car park with my cup of coffee. And it just disappeared. And my work has got better. I'm actually achieving more now. And the other thing is, the people around me are more supportive of me. It's as if we are, you know, we're, we're communicating on a better level. They're getting to understand me. Mm. I said, how's it at home then? I said, things are pretty awesome. I'm actually planning a holiday because I haven't been on a holiday fee for a long time. This is awesome, Paul. And all it was, was 
The flash of the blade and obvious, but understanding it, noticing that the problem wasn't the migraines, but it was an effect of something else. And then just making that pact with your unconscious mind. And after a while, it becomes a habit then, you see. The habit became, well, I haven't got that, that little twitch or that little signal, but I'm going outside to have that 20 minutes now to recharge before I need to recharge, recharge. And then she was getting a perfect habit, looking for holidays, getting more work done. So she wasn't working at 100% anymore, but she was achieving that 100%. You get that, yeah? Now then, think about that. I want you to think, just, Im just imagine for the moment. I mean, maybe you could imagine that, that thing, but imagine if you were to work at 100% or more. Imagine what burnout might be. Have you seen burnout before? I bet you felt tired before. You know, have you made those mistakes? What about that anxiety? What about that imposter syndrome? What about communication and relationship issues? Have you been suffering some ill health? What's, what's that feel like? And when you think of all of that, because really it's, well, the answer is, is and I'm not going to say work-life balance, even though I've just said it. And say something else because I hate the word balance. Apart from if you're trying to balance, we're not. So just imagine, you know, the type of things that if you've done it before, what you used to see, what you used to feel when things were getting on top of you. Because I and, and I know this is a little negative, but I assure I assure you we're going to come out of this to be positive. I just want you to remind yourself of those old behaviours and those old things that you used to set yourself that created that ill health, that burnout, that injury, that anxiety, the FOMO, the imposter syndrome, the relationship, the communication issues, maybe that ill health, and just see it for what it was back then. Or if you're planning on working 100% or more, what it would do. We've talked about, you know, just, just imagine what it would be like to have that because I can, one of the few guarantees I get is that's one of the things that's going to happen if you really try to push you know, they burn the candle at both ends. I'm not sure how you do that, but they do. Because it meets in the middle and everything disappears, doesn't it? Can't do that. So, there you go. That's it. Finished. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Because the question is, do you still want that 100%? Do you still want to work at 110%? Hopefully, you're going to say no. But the thing is, you're going to say to me, possibly, hey, Cluffy, now what do I do? What do I do now? Because you've given me all the pitfalls. You've told me all the BS about what people say. And now you've left me hanging. And I'll never leave you hanging. So how do you work efficiently? That's different, isn't it? How do you work passionately? How do you work healthily? Here's the thing. Because what would happen if you put all those three together? So I'm efficient, I'm passionate, I'm working efficiently, and I'm so healthy in doing this. If you had those three as just a part of your resources, how much would you start to achieve? I'm not going to tell you to think about that now and see yourself over there working efficiently, passionately and healthily and all the effects that would spur off of that. I wouldn't ask you to do that right now because if you did take a minute or two to do that right now, that would be maybe a little bit of a hypnotic type. Well, you could think about it if you want. But what we want is work-life balance. No, we don't. We want work-life harmony. Why? What's the difference, Cluffy? What's the difference between balance and harmony? Well, for me, for me is balance is if you can imagine balance, I think of like a little triangle as your, as your balancing point and a plank or a line that goes across the top of it. And the balance is, it's a horizontal line, isn't it? Horizontal line resting on that triangle. No momentum. No, to me, when I think about that, it's no emotion in it at all. It's a plank. And <laughs> it's just, just a, dead piece of wood. That's all that type, type of things that I think of. It's just a plank. It's got no emotion. It's just staying there. It's dead. It's still. Nothing's going to happen. That's it. Quiet. It just goes. But harmony, and I loved this when I, was, when I first learned this, harmony is a little bit like, <clears throat> and the way I, I, I got it was, excuse me for coffee, by the way, was that imagine a jazz band. Because a jazz band has they don't tend to have, I guess, one lead singer. One, well, they do have singers, but they don't have the lead. Because when they're playing and they're harmonizing, you might find the saxophone comes in 
and as a saxophone comes to the front, the others just drop back a little. And then the drummer will come in, and the saxophone goes back. And then the piano or the organist come in, and then the, the rhythm guitar, and then the bass player comes. But each one comes in to the front, the others drop back to support it or support them. And that's what I feel the harmony is, because there'll be days when you do have to work and probably work at that fictitious 100 plus percent, because the work is dictating that. But the harmony is you understand your values and things like that, and you know this is okay, you're at peace with that, because you know you're going to, gonna, what a horrible word, you're going to rest after or make amends with your family, with your friends, your social, social life, or just your sleeping with your body. And that's what's harmonizing. And you're going to make sure that you look after yourself in that way. Because when you're, you're healthy and you're happy, everyone around you becomes healthier and happier. Now, how do you do that? How do you get into harmony? Well, one of the things is, you, and these are in no particular order, because they're just a particular order that came to my mind. And one is, try to get into the flow state. Now, the flow state, I actually did a long, well, longer, longer podcast than this way back in hashtag 103 about the flow state. Because it was, again, this first came to me and the way I understood it so much better was during or going to the gym. Or, and this was actually someone talking about doing jujitsu. And they were going to jujitsu seven days a week every week of the year and the guy who who was like interviewing this this the guy who's doing this said well how do you do that because when i go to the gym i uh, and do my jujitsu maybe a couple of weeks i'm going really well and then i get injured and then i'm out for a little while then i come back and that injury's not quite right and i have to compensate somewhere else and i really have to work and then i'm off again and this guy says well that's because you're putting too much effort into it you're putting too much stress you know, still need to be, the challenge needs to be up there. So you are challenged, but you're not overstressed in the intensity. So you're stretched with your skill level, but not with the intensity. And he said, every time you do that, now there's, there'll be one or two times in the month where I do take myself up because he said, normally I train about 80% and thinking of increasing my skill level, try to stretch myself in that way. But I never get injured. But then just once a month, maybe twice a month, I suddenly ramp it up to the hundred percent. But because of that, I can I can do that because my body is fit, it's healthy, it's not injured. I'll never get injured when I'm doing that. And he said, that's the flow state. So if you can imagine a graph, and I do this in a lot more detail in hashtag 103. If you can imagine a graph, you've got your Left axis, which is the vertical one, and the the one at the going across the bottom, going left to right. The one going up is intensity. The one going across the bottom is your skill or challenges. And you can imagine something like a 45 degree line going up. It could be any line, but about 45 degrees is good. So what it means is you're always stretching yourself each time. Over time, you're stretching yourself a little bit more, a little bit more, but it's not too too intense so the stress doesn't take over and you give up but if it was too low imagine that line was it was was just above the bottom level where you're not really stretching your skill level at all it gets bloody boring doesn't it there's no intensity at all you're not challenging yourself at all so therefore you get bored and you bomb out of that that way so either way you bomb out because it's too intense or you bomb out because it's too little intense unintense whatever that word will be but imagine that 45 degree angle where you're always stretching yourself and the intensity is just enough to keep you going. And that's when you get becoming that flow state where you just are there in the moment. And it's a little bit like that, not quite a hockey stick, but when you do that, you tend to find that you can stretch yourself quicker, faster, but also have it, the intensity is never that much because obviously you're always growing that way. It doesn't stay the same. So, and when you're in that flow, you're always protecting yourself. So that's just a state of a state to be in. So when you're planning your day, which is the next one, you're planning your day with enough time to challenge yourself and to make it as intense to the level of the intensity, which just keeps you just there on the edge. So you're going to learn, you're going to achieve. 
So now you know you're going to get there and you're going to do it in that flow state where time just disappears. So you plan your day. Now, did you notice I didn't say plan your work? Why didn't you do that? We're talking about work, aren't we, Paul? Yes, we are. But we were talking about harmony. And what happens with harmony? When you're at work, you're at work and things drop below that to support your work or you in the work. And when you're not at work, work drops back and your family come in or your social time comes in or your gym time comes in. Your meditation maybe comes in. Your, your, your hobbies come in, your interests. So you plan your day, which includes time for yourself. It includes time for others. And that can come in any way you choose. And it doesn't have to be the same every day. As long as you've got that in, in the forefront of your mind, when I plan my day, I'm going to do this for my work. And I'm going to do this with myself. And I'm going to see people here. And there are going to be some days where work takes over a little bit, but there's, other, there's going to be other days where it doesn't. It takes a more of a backseat because you're going to spend time with your loved ones. Or you're going to take time for yourself to give yourself a day off to do nothing but just be with yourself. How do you do that? Plan your day? Well, there's some great ways. I used to do it, and I've talked about this before, um, with a way that Tony Robbins, I'm sure you've heard of Tony Robbins. If you haven't, Google him. He's a massive, big, doesn't do NLP, but he does do NLP. Doesn't do hypnosis, but he does do hypnosis. But he's um, massive in every way, shape, or form in that personal development world. I love him to bits. And he had a way called OPA, Outcome, Purpose, Action. So you'd plan your day with different, and it's a bit like time blocking, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but you would time block your, your sections of your day. But instead of just writing it down, you would put your outcome you want, not what you're going to do, what's the outcome you want. That's different, isn't it? I'm not doing this, what I'm going to achieve. So you know the outcome you want, and you know why. The purpose, the P in OPA, O-P-A. So you've got a why, why it's important, because if it's not important, I'm just doing this stuff, then you're going to kick it out, because you're not going to be in that flow. And then action, what action are you going to take? Then you put it in, in your diary. And I used to love that. And I did that for quite a few years. And I know my, son, my older son used to do it with me, not with me on that, but used to do the same type of things in his work. And it made a big difference to us because we were always doing things which was purposeful. We always knew where we were going. We always knew what action we were going to do, even though we were doing completely different types of work. And then there's things like time blocking. Now, I guess the, the most, call it the famous person for doing this is a guy called Cal Newport. So you can, he has a podcast. He has time block manuals. He has a time block website. And basically, you're blocking out times in the day where you go, between here and then, I am going to have this focused time. So it's going to be intense, but I know exactly how intense it will be. I know how long I've got to do it. And again, he would put in what he's doing. So you're getting that open bit. I'm getting the outcome I want. He tended to knew his why in his head. And the action points were there because he'd have notes beside it, the type of things he was going to do. And he would block out the whole day, including things like, and occasionally, brushing my teeth, going to the gym, eating dinner with my family, because those times were, you know, sacrosanct. And he was getting then a great harmony. Yes, you can call that sometimes a little anal, but it works. And it's such a great habit to get into. And with both of those, because they're so, because what happens is, both of those need you to be sensible, sensible with your time allocation. But who's a great, who's the greatest time allocation person in the world? I don't know of one, because we always overestimate, we always underestimate. Very rarely do we get it right. But the only way we get it right, more than not, is to review. Maybe review the day, or review that time block, or that that thing. That said, well, actually, I put down two hours for that to get to here. My outcome didn't get there. Okay, now I've got to think about that. I've got to allow more time for that next time. And you just get it in your head. So the next time you come to do that, you go, oh, I've got two hours. Maybe I need two hours, but I need another hour in the evening or something like that. Or I, my outcome for those two hours, because I've only got those two hours, my outcome is slightly less than that. So I can achieve my outcome, which means then you are working in a way that you are getting, you're producing the 100%, even though you haven't really set out for that. 
I mean, one of the things I, I did with my son, who wanted you to work at 100%, actually had a little burnout. We had to talk about it. But he was, he would do his day and his day would start really early and it would finish reasonably late. And I'd ask him about it and I'd say, how did your day go? And he goes, oh, it's terrible, Dad, terrible. So I said, what happened? He said, well, I did this, I did this, I did this, I achieved that, I achieved that. And it was massive what he achieved. But there was one thing that didn't quite go to plan. Maybe a little bit too intense, maybe challenged him too much, or maybe just underestimating, overestimating. And that one thing destroyed the whole day because we only focused on the negative. We didn't fo- if, we'd, if he'd have focused on the 90%, the 95% that he'd achieved, he would have said, well, that other thing, well, it didn't get done, I'll just have to, I'll review that and do it better next time, or I'll, I'll allow more time or put it for another day. But he didn't. He concentrated on the negative, and it just blew out the 95% of, a, of success. So again, what, what we said was, I just suggested to him, I said, well, you know, I believe you're working harder than most. So let's just set your target a little bit less. A bit like that thing where I said, the, you know, the, you're setting an outcome which was too excessive or too optimistic. I want you to, set, when you plan your day, when you plan your week, because that's the other thing we'll talk about in a minute. When you plan your week and you're putting these things down and you, then you get to your day, I want you to work on achieving 80%. He said, Dad, what? No, achieve 80%. Just go for that as your goal. So if you think you can do that, cut it down to 80%. That's your, your outcome. That's what you're looking for. And he said, oh, okay, Dad, I don't like it. And he started doing it. Now, what happened? Can you imagine what happened? Well, he beat 80% every time. And he was so happy with himself. He was still producing the same amount which was more than most people, still hitting that 90, 95%, which was awesome, incredible. But now he was finishing the day feeling good. And because he's feeling good, he would reward himself for some time out. So again, it was putting the right amount of intensity to get in that flow state, challenging just to the right amount. And the thing about it is, is that review. First of all, setting up your week, like on a Sunday afternoon. I know he does it, I know I do it. We still sit down on a Sunday afternoon and just plan out the things that we're going to be doing in the week, Monday, Tuesday, the things that you have to do, looking at the gaps. He goes even further than that because his work is more intense than mine. And then at the end of the week, on that Sunday, he will just review what's happened as well. Certainly at the end of the day, he tends to review things very quickly. Did, did I achieve the things? Do I need to, to move the things I didn't achieve maybe to another day that week or move things around? Because you can't ignore them. But he still now achieves more than... I feel he would ever have done, and he's finishing on a good day, a good note, on a high. And so he is achieving 100%, but not working at 100%, by working at 80%, which is awesome, isn't it? So you have to review and then reassess. As I say, we're not very good at assessing our times, and that just gets you better at it. Now, the other thing you could do is listen to all the back catalogue of my podcast, because there's so much there. (laughs) <laughs> and there is actually so much there and there's lots of little things and lots of big things so I do think not only just obviously I'd love you to go through the whole of the back catalogue especially if you're new so you'll be here for the next 10 years listening to me while you listen to the old ones and the new ones but there's also a wealth of information not only here but in other podcasts in YouTube on the web in book form because the thing about this is it's that skill level If you can read and learn something that someone has spent years trying to achieve and have learned, you've just now saved yourself those years. You've learned it in maybe three or four days, what they they took years to do. Now that is, again, learning at the flow state level. And then you can be able to use it. And it becomes a good habit. And obviously I would like that habit to be shared. So you... You know, and the other thing about when you share things, I tell you, as usual, when you share something like that, when you share a tip, when I'm sure like I'm sharing here, I'm learning myself again by explaining it to you. So if you could share it to other people, you share it back to me, what you do, you get to be the teacher, you get to be the master because you, now you're doing what you know and knowing what you do and you're knowing it even more intensely, more detailed by, by having to communicate it because you find out what you don't quite understand, or you understand it, oh, wow, and other things will come in intuitively. You'll just learn even more. 
The other thing that you might have to do is reass- reassess your values to notice a conflict. What are you talking about, Cluffy? Let me tell you, well, if you're intensely um, working in a way that taken a long time, but you have a very high value for family. There's going to be a clash, a conflict in your values, because you've got this work value, worth ethic, but it's a value, beliefs, and you've also got family values and beliefs. And if you're working 20 hours a day, and you also want a happy family life, you know that's not going to work. You're going to be knocking, knocking your head against that brick wall. So again, it's that harmony. So you need to look at the areas of your life. And I think we should all do this. We should all over ourselves, but this is one of the things we should, should all over us and do, is look at different areas of our life and look at what's important to us. That's how, let's say you work out our value. Why is this important to me? Notice if you're coming away from something negative, because if you're coming away from something negative, so I want to work to earn money to look after my family, they're all positive because that's important to me because I don't want to go into debt. That means you're working away from debt. It's got nothing to do with the others. Get rid of that belief about debt and things like that, and then the rest will just flourish. That's what I believe. But you need to look to each one. What is my value for family? What is my value for relationships? What are my values around my health? Maybe my spirituality. Maybe anything you could think of which is important to you as a a section of your life. Look at your values and just notice, do they complement each other? Do they live in harmony? Maybe sometimes they may not complicate, complicate, they might not, what did I say? They they might not support each other, (laughs) but because you're in harmony, you can make sure that you can mitigate and support each one of those, which means then you're bringing it into, well, you're harmonizing the whole lot. And when you do that, you might need to, you know, when you look at those values, you're gonna, I, might, I might, if you want, I'll, I'll maybe do a whole podcast on looking at values and how we can deal with them and dealing with those conflicts because we all have conflicts in values. But we just don't know them. We just feel that conflict, have that argument, something triggers us, and it's maybe a clash in values, not getting what we want. Maybe that's why, but we need to look at that. And that's all about communication because that's how, we can discuss with people. I know I'm, because one of the things with the Clash of Values, say you're working so much just on this small amount. If you don't communicate that with your family, say, look, I'm really sorry, but I've really got to work really hard over the next three days. I'm not going to be around. Can you support me in that? So when I come back, we can do something, do something different. We can support each other. Once you get that, that yeah, we're, we're there because you're, you're telling me what you're doing it for. Now I understand your intention. I thought you were just ignoring us because you were just going to work because you didn't love us and things like that. You go, actually, I'm doing it because I love you. Oh, well, let's work together. Let's support each other. What else can I do to help? And then you get support. All these things. And, and then, you know, what, one of these might be the, the golden nugget that's going to change everything for you. But I do really think that it's probably a number of them at different levels, different intensities. How do you sort that out? One of the things is we talked about reviewing your week. But just review what's happening to you. How do you do that? Stop, pause, and think. Review inside. Ask yourself those difficult questions. Am I spending too much effort, too much work? Am I ignoring? Am I communicating? Do people know my intention? Stop and pause. Notice the feelings you have in your body about that. Maybe like that lady who had that initial backache. Say, look, hey, what is he trying to do for me? Sometimes, as you know, when I've done a podcast, I've I've done a podcast immediately after I've had a funny feeling in in my my tummy, and I thought, I've stopped and paused, and it gave me information, which I then shared with you. So you, and even stopping and pausing and saying, am I setting my, the right targets? Are they 80%, are they 90%, or are they 100% plus? Because when you do all of this, and it's work in progress, and it always will be, because if you think about that flow target or that flow graph, the line is always going up, so things are always going to get more intense, but they're also going to get more challenging, and then will be more interesting, and the rewards will be that much greater. But just stopping and pausing, noticing the targets you're setting yourself for each area of your life as well, because this isn't all just about work. Maybe you're doing 100% of work for the family, but your, your health is going down. Well, you're no good to your family if your health isn't good. You have to be mindful of yourself. 
work on yourself. Pull the air down first before, you know, in a plane, before you give it to your child. Very minor metaphor, but look after yourself first so you can look after others better. When I always tell women, not unless, don't always tell women, take that back, Paul. A lot of the times when mothers come to see me and they, they talk about the anxieties they have and things like this and their the health is not so good and their energy levels and all this stuff. And I said, you know, but I have to do it for my children. So I said, when you are in good health and you're feeling good and you're feeling happy because you've worked on yourself and you really are in a good place, how will your children be? And I said, well, they'll be ecstatic because they'll be around me when I'm feeling good. Because at the moment, they're around me when I'm not feeling so good, which makes them not so good. And the thing is, when they're around me, when I'm feeling good and they're feeling good, I get to feel better. And they're, because I'm getting better, they get to feel better. It's flashes of the bleeding. So we have to take time for ourselves so others can get the benefit. Now, one of the things I always say, but I'm going to repeat it every time, set your intention. That's the outcome of that block. But set your intention for each area of your life. That time spent with your your children, whether it's just to have lunch, dinner with somebody, with your family. I want to set my intention to have a lovely, communicative time with these people to share. So when you do that, you're setting your intention, which is your desired outcome. And also just set your state. How do I want to be? I want to be relaxed. I want to be communicative. Communicative? I want to be able to relate, communicate. But also that means even when you're doing those time blocks of things, Set your state. Well, now this is time for focus. This is, or this one is for energy. This time is for whatever. Think about everyone. And do it at the start of your day. If there's something which is important, a one thing even important, set your intention for that, that particular time. So let's review very quickly before we go. If you're failing to work at 100, 110%, you're always going to. Let's just recognize that out of the block. Never going to happen. And there are those things where you can, you can just test yourself by, you know, are you feeling burnt out? Are you feeling fatigued? Are you getting injured? Are you getting negative emotions such as anxiety? You know, fear of missing out, FOMO, imposter syndrome. Are your relationships going a little bit on the, the wobbly side? Are you communicating well? You know, are you having a crazy work-life balance? <laughs> or is there maybe some ill health going on? Review that. And ask, stop and pause and ask those questions. Imagine how you wanted to be. I say that again, but clearly, I can't even say clearly, clearly. Imagine how you want it to be, that work-life harmony. See yourself as a result of working in harmony. What would you be looking like? If there was a you over there, how would you see yourself move? How would you walk? How relaxed would you be? How, what would the smile on your face be? How would you be dressed? How would you move? What's that? Nonverbal communication that you'd be giving to everybody. What would you be hearing? What, how would you be talking? And even if you wanted to, you could just go into that you out there, that target of a work-life harmony, you. Looking through your own eyes, what would the world look like? What would you hear, that inner voice? What would you, how would you hear other people communicating to you? How would you communicate to them when you've got this lovely work life? What would you smell? What would you taste? And how would that make you feel? That's what we're going to do. So just imagine that. And as you imagine what it'd be like, you're setting your overall real outcome. And think about that flow state, the intensity and the skill levels. Is it just right? Review your values. Am I time blocking? But most importantly, just, you know, you need to state your outcome and state your intention. Get into state. Review. Set up your harmonic life. And if I had a harmonica, I would play it for you now. <laughs> I hope that makes complete and utter complete, complete sense. You might have to rewind it and listen to it again. I think I will. Because, to be honest, there's a lot of bloody good golden nuggets in there. And the thing is, you're going to say, probably. They're so simple, Paul. I know this. Well, if you know this, this is before the simplicity part, if you know this and you're still feeling fatigued, FOMO, anxiety, and all the stuff we talked about, injury, burnout, work-life balance, then it's intellectual. You're just knowing it. And just knowing it and not doing it is absolute. Well, you might as well kick it out because you don't really know it then. 
But if you master it, which is doing what you know and knowing what you do and following these simple, simple steps, we've broken it down. This is the whole point of Personal Development Unplugged. It's breaking down the complicated into simple, easy steps to achieve the most for your investment, the return on the investment, the return on your energy, the outcome is massive. And when you share it, it just gets better and better. You never know where, how far the ripples of change will be. Be the change you want to see in others and all those lovely memes. But more importantly, just be the change you want to be in yourself by imagining it that you out there living a life of harmony in all areas of your life. Anyway, as I said, I hope that makes perfectly, perfectly sense. <laughs> Please let me know. You can email me, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. If you want some something on those values, let me know. That will inspire me to do a little bit more. If there's anything else that we talked about that you go, oh, Paul, there's, there's something. Can you let me know on that email and we'll do a complete podcast. You can remain anonymous. If there's something that you do that I haven't mentioned, please Share that with me too, so I can share it with everyone else. Because the more this integrated field of learning gets, gets filled with wonderful learnings and sharings, we just get better and better. And little old planet Earth gets better and better. And we'll, well, I'm not going to go on a rant on that, but the world, little old planet Earth, our little planet Earth, our home, will get better. So please do email me. And as usual, please share this with everyone you don't know and do know. You don't have to do it right now, right now, right now. But you could do it right now or you could do it as soon as you turn this off right now. Just share it with everyone. Be awesome if you did because the word gets out. Be awesome. Be awesome. And also, if you haven't subscribed, because I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, do press that subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening. And then you get these. I know the five minute quickies don't come out quite so often as they did, but Every Saturday, you get this longer podcast. And hopefully you like the longer versions. Again, give me feedback. Got that email, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Let me know whether you like shorters, shorters, short ones, long ones, fat ones, whatever. Who knows? And lastly, but not leastly, remember paulcloughonline.com. You got the free hypnosis. All you have to do is put slash podcast at the end of that. So paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast podcast but also just go to paulcloughonline.com and you'll see the programs i've got and the one i really love and i love doing and i think is has got some absolutely awesome hypnotic processes there is that supreme inner confidence don't get confused about supreme because it's inner confidence not overconfidence money back guarantee and you get a massive discount just put in pdu 40 you get 40 percent off if you've signed up to the the um, hypnosis tracks and you'll get a welcome email there'll be a code there to get even more so you've got nothing to lose other than your unconfidence and your anxiety or your FOMO or your imposter syndrome and all that stuff anyway that's enough from me the music's going to fade out so until next time my friend bye bye Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.